بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وعلى اله وصحبه وبارك وسلم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما الحمد لله uh, with the grace of Allah uh, we have yet another opportunity to meet again through this uh, virtual platform and i wish to extend my sincere gratitude to my beloved brother abba nawi atallah for this uh, great arrangement may allah give you uh, the ajar uh, in the form of ajrun ghayr mamnun with all the knowledge and experience that we are going to share so the ajar will keep flowing to you non stop inshallah and thank you very much for dr zahir ahmad for the um, opening remark for the session and jazakallah to uh, sister shamun afrin for the beautiful recitation of uh, al quran from the surah fusilat and also for the uh, brief introduction by sister aisha shanis uh, may allah bless you all and for all the leaders uh, for the uh, jamaah islam in al hind uh, and all the brothers and sisters who are with me right now i wish you all the very best and may this session bring barakah and rahmah from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah and i received uh, we, now we have like 84 participants in the platform and some of you send uh, some private messages with good remarks uh, with very good welcoming remarks and i am very very sorry truly sorry i cannot respond to all of your personal remark but uh, may allah um, uh, answer all your prayers inshallah and to me inshallah and inshallah uh, we are going to meet again and again and again for all the very very good results inshallah so uh, let me go into the presentation and i'm i'm told that we am going to have uh, like um 60 minutes so inshallah by one hour from now we are going to conclude uh, my presentation alhamdulillah inshallah so now slowly we move into uh, the main topic that i'm going to share with you today and we call it as the professional khalifa part two yeah um, of course we have gone through the professional khalifa this is our journey our journey in the program started off um, uh, i think two months ago um, we started off with a professional khalifa okay now we move on into professional khalifa part two uh, i think before i proceed on professional khalifa part two I think it is better for me to revisit some of the key points in Professional Khalifa Part 1. Yeah, we are going to revisit very briefly on Professional Khalifa Part 1. And then from there, we are going to move uh, the continuity of that into the Professional Khalifa Part 2, inshallah. Okay, so... Um, uh, uh, let me clear the... Okay, now, oops, I'm sorry about that. Clear everything, and no annotate. Okay, let us move on to the next slide. Okay, uh, in the previous session, I believe it was in July, um, there are a lot of um, um, scholars talk about Khalifa, yeah, based on um, the, 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 the description from the book, from the holy books of Al-Quran, uh, from the narration of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, we can classify that Khalifa can be clustered into the following four categories. As a ruler, as a successor, as a steward, and as a leader. And for the sake of our discussion, and uh, to bring it more much closer to reality, we are going to zoom and focus on the discussion on Khalifa um, solely in the perspective of us, as a leader, yeah, as a leader in the family, as a leader in the community, as a leader in the organization, as a, the leader in the um, organization of Jamaat Islami Al Hind. So, we are going to talk more on that particular uh, perspective. And of course, if you are not a leader yourself, you don't have, to have any family, you are still very young, then you can always be a leader to yourself to lead your activities, your nafs toward getting the barakah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we define the word professionalism in the context of Islam, and we break it up into two dimensions, yeah? two basically very important dimensions, professional in the perspective of dunya, 
and professional in the perspective of akhirah and we can be um, successful and we can be very very we have a failure life in dunya and similarly we can be very successful in akhirah and can be, be a total failure in akhirah yeah so because of that we have four dimensions okay we have the four dimensions so dimension number four whereby you become you are become a failure in akhirah and you become a failure in dunya and this is what we call you are in a total loss okay and we do not want that to happen to us and we move on to quarter number three uh, whereby you are you are successful in akhirah your prayer is acceptable by allah your fast is acceptable by allah your zikr your zakah everything is acceptable by allah but you live a miserable life in dunya then then you become fitnah to islam okay, you become fitnah to islam because in dunya we are we we have relationship with other people and you cannot be a successful individual in dunya but you focus only in the akhirah then you become the fitnah yeah and the second one is you become a failure in akhirah but you work very hard to gain the, the recognition in dunya then you become what we call arrogant you know arrogant so because, because everything is disconnected with akhirah so everything is based on what you are doing and you become successful and it is disconnected with akhirah so because of that there is no um ta'abudiyah uh, uh, in that sense uh, everything is according to your nafs according to your needs and there is no what you call the uh, the, the the heaven and hell Okay, there is no reward and punishment. Everything is dunya, dunya, and dunya, and that may and it will become arrogant. What you want is quarter number one. Professional Muslim to be number one, whereby you become successful in dunya and successful in akhirah, and you become what we call the professional Muslim. And this is our main scope. This is our main scope to be professional, meaning to be successful in dunya and also to be successful in akhirah. Okay, alhamdulillah. So uh, that is our um, discussion for um, uh, last month. Uh, what else we continue? When we talk about professional, we are talking about being professional in the family, being professional with your friends and colleagues in business, being professional in business and muamala, and also being professional with your community and umma. Okay, um, what else? Then now, slowly, we conclude yesterday that to be a professional leader, Okay, uh, you need to be both transactional as well as transformational. Transactional is addressing the current needs, which is managing the routines. And transformational is all about future needs, talking about development and transformation. So, for our discussion in um, Professional Khalifa Part 2, we are going to focus on transactional leadership and focusing on the current needs and managing the routine. So, my dear brothers and sisters, inshallah, this is what we are going to focus. Transactional, and how do we lead our daily life, our routine life, in order to, in order to, to, to demonstrate the true spirit of professional khalifa. Yeah? And uh, I believe uh, only for this one-day session is not enough. Perhaps we might need another one two or three more sessions just to discuss on this very important topic. Once we are done with this, then inshallah, perhaps maybe next year, inshallah, we are going to talk about the future needs of professional khalifa. Okay, talking about um, transformational uh, leadership. Okay, so uh, that is our scope for, um, for today, inshallah. So because of that, I'm going to break uh, the session today Professional Khalifa Part 2, focusing on the current needs, focusing on the transactional uh, dimension of Professional Khalifa, I'm going to break it up into the following three topics. Okay, number one is the principle of Professional Khalifa. And number two, how to be, in order to be professional, we need to demonstrate our humility, our humbleness. You know, even Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he is very well known for his humility and humbleness. So much so, even the kuffar, the mushrikin, were attracted uh, to his akhlaq. Yeah, and this is where we are going to demonstrate. We need we need to discuss some portion, not all, because this is a very huge topic. 
some portion of humility in order to become the professional khalifa. And in addition to that, we are going to talk about how we can communicate and interact professionally as, as a khalifa. Yeah? And uh, slowly we are going to move into the first topic, the principle of khalifa. Okay, so my dear brothers and sisters, remember we are going to have three important topics. Number one is the principles. Number two is the humility. And number three is how we communicate and interact with one another, inshallah. Yeah, so let us explore topic number one. Uh, talking about the principles. And I would like to draw to your attention. Okay, I would like to draw to your attention by this very famous verse. From uh, the from our Quran, it is from verse number one hundred and twelve, uh, from chapter uh, from uh, Surah Ali Imran. Audo billahi min al-shaytanir rajim. Duribat alaihim al-zillatu ayna ma tufu illa bihablim min Allah. Illa bihablim min Allah wa hablim min al nasi wa ba'u bi ghadabim min Allah wa duribat alayhim al maskana Dhanika bi annahum kanu yakfurun bi ayati Allah wa yakutulun al anbiya bi ghayri haqqa ذلك بما عصوا وكانوا يعتدون صدق الله العظيم ما يا brothers and sisters due to the constraint of time I don't plan to give the full sharah of this ayah but I want to draw your attention on this very two very important kalima حبلم من الله and حبلم من الناس meaning our life, we are being connected with two kinds of connection. Number one is connection with Allah, we call it hablum min Allah. And another connection is with mankind, hablum min nas. And both of these connections between hablum min Allah and hablum min nas, they are very much interconnected. And so much so, we need to create the balance. We cannot be too focused in hablum in Allah and forget about our relationship with mankind. Because our relationship with mankind, with a human being now in dunya, has a lot to do with what happened to us in the hereafter. Okay? And we cannot too focus in our relationship with mankind and disconnect the ajar and the, 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 the mistake that will be later on that we are going to be responsible in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Yawmul Qiyamah. So because of that, a professional Muslim, number one, we need to create and strike the balance between our relationship with Allah and our relationship with mankind. Because these two, when we create the balance, then it will strike um, and it will, it, it will give the benefit to the Ummah, to ourselves and to the mankind, inshallah. And let us move on. Um, let's take a look at this tamsil analogy of a burger. Okay, <clears throat> which part is the most delicious of a burger? Which is the most delicious part of the burger? Because in a burger we have uh, the top bun. This is, this is the top bun, and we have the bottom bun, and we have the meat. Yeah. So in burger, which is the most Delicious one, of course, is the middle one, which is the, the meat. The meat is the most delicious one. So let's take a look at our life as a leader. Okay, let's take a look at our life as a leader in, uh, in, 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 in the world right now. When we talk about our life right now, um, we are in the state of pressure. We get the pressure from the top. Okay. And we also receive the pressure from the bottom. And we are stuck in the middle. Who pressure us from the top? In an organization, maybe our boss, maybe our superior. In business, maybe our customers, maybe the uh, stakeholders. And who pressure us from the bottom? 
in a family, perhaps the children. In, a, in an organization, perhaps our subordinates. Okay? In, a, in a company, maybe our workers. So we continue to receive pressure from the top and from the bottom. So because of that, we come up with a very interesting leadership principle that coincides nicely with the teaching of Islam. Yeah, and all those, all those ends with TY. TY, 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 and TY. So this is a very important concept. And the first one is when you become a leader, when you are selected as a leader, as a manager, as an executive, <clears throat> or when you become a father, or when you become a husband, automatically when you become a leader, you will have together with you what we call the first team, which is called authority. And similarly, when you become a Khalifa in Surah Al-Baqarah, when Allah mentioned that He wants to make us as a Khalifa, meaning Allah, Allah is giving us the authority to manage the world according to His teachings, to lead the world according to His guidance. Yeah? So similarly, let us take a look at ourselves as a Khalifa in a family. Definitely a father has the fullest authority in the family. Next is a mother. Okay, and you, when you get married, for example, the moment you become the husband, the authority of the father is transferred totally to the son-in-law. Now, what happens when you have the authority? What happens when you have the authority, authority and the organization? Then, meaning you have the power, the power to lead, the power to bring the family, the wife, the organization to certain directions, the power to make the decisions, and the authority to penalize, okay? Um, uh, to, 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 to penalize if, some, if somebody which is under your authority is not following your instructions. So this is the first T in the Burger Principle of Leadership. The second T that comes after you have the authority is what we call the responsibility. When a young man get married to a young lady, Automatically, when he becomes a husband, then he will have the authority. When a father leads the whole family, then the father has authority. And authority will come together with them the sense of responsibility. What is the responsibility of a husband? To teach and to guide the wife. And also to fulfill some form of uh, responsibility as a husband to the wife. What is the responsibility of a manager in an organization? Not just to lead, but also to teach the subordinate, to coach the subordinate, to develop the subordinate. If the, the, the leader, the manager cannot lead and coach and teach the subordinate, then it is his responsibility to send the subordinate for proper trainings because he is responsible to develop the subordinates. So for a professional Muslim, for a professional Khalifa, you need to understand this. The moment you become a leader, you have the authority over somebody and it is your responsibility to develop that somebody. If you are a professional Khalifa as a father, it is your responsibility to develop your own children and you are responsible to give them proper education, security, and all sorts of things. And, and number three is a very, very important concept that a lot of leaders, including Muslim leaders, fail to understand. What is the third thing? After you have the authority and then you have the responsibility, what is the third T? You may respond in the chat box. And I want to see your response. What do you think about the third T after we have discussed three T's? We have discussed two T. 
which is uh, authority, responsibility. What is the third thing? So, Mr. Nazir Atawullah said about accountability, Mr. Ahmad Ali, humility, Ms. Parvin, accountability, Mr. Khayyam, ability. A lot of you say accountability, integrity, and duty. Alhamdulillah. You are, you are with me, by the way. Alhamdulillah. So, let me continue with my, with my slides. With my slides. The third T that I'm referring to is accountability. What is accountability, my dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters? What is accountability? Accountability. Once you have performed your responsibility, then your children will do something and there will be an outcome. Your staff will perform their responsibility and there will be an outcome. Your subordinate will perform the responsibility and there will be the outcome. And I'm talking about the outcome. Outcome. Or the results. So when we talk about accountability for a professional Muslim, meaning whatever task or duty being carried out by the people under your authority, Let's say if you are a husband or if you are a father, whatever being demonstrated by your children, by your wife, which we call the outcome, you need to be accountable. Meaning you need to be answerable. Answerable. You need to be answerable. If you are the manager in the organization, Whatever duty being carried out by your clerk, by your engineer, they are responsible, but you as a manager need to be accountable, need to be answerable. And this is where it is very sad to say a lot of managers, a lot of fathers, they run away from being accountable. Why? Because the mistakes are carried out, are being done by somebody else. My brothers and sisters, this is where you are going to be assessed in terms of your professionalism. The professionalism of a leader is measured on how he can shoulder and be answerable due to the outcome and result being carried out by another people under his own responsibility and authority. So if a son doing a mistake, a professional khalifa, a father, need to step forward and take the accountability. Don't be chicken out and run away. If you are a manager, your clerk make a mistake. Yes, he or she is responsible for the mistake, but you are answerable to the management because of that outcome. You cannot run away because this is the principle. And in Islam, in Islam, the ultimate of accountability, you will be questioned and you will have to be answerable in Yawmul Qiyamah. So when everything is blended nicely, then we will be always be responsible even though that job, that duty, that task is being carried out by somebody else which is under our authority and responsibility. Yeah? So this is what I mean by accountability. So my dear brothers, is it clear at this stage we're talking about accountability? If it is clear, please type number one on the chat box. If it is clear to you, please type number one in the chat box. Okay? Alhamdulillah. Summa alhamdulillah. Thank you very much. So this is the bottom line being a professional khalifa we have the authority we need to perform our responsibility and whatever the outcome you need to shoulder the accountability yeah so let me continue with the last thing what is the last thing when you have observed your authority and you carry out your responsibility and for whatever the outcome, you become very accountable and you know you'll be accountable not only in dunya but also in the hereafter. So because of that, you become very, very careful. 
every little thing you do with high level of taqwa and iman because you know everything will be recorded and later on you will be answerable in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in yawmul qiyamah and you know that the measurement of mizan will determine whether finally you go to jannah or you go to the you go to nar or hellfire and what is the last one what is the last one when you do things with high level of conscious of god consciousness then what happened you will have high level of integrity and integrity in islam we mention it as amanah okay high level of integrity in islam we mention it as amanah integrity amanah amanah will come amanah will not come if you don't feel accountable if you don't feel responsible and you don't have the sense of authority so these three the first t should come together that only then you feel integrity you will have the sense of high level of integrity and when you have a high level of integrity then what happen you become very very professional in your dealings with mankind hablu minan nas while you have a very strong relationship with allah hablu min allah when you know that you will be answerable and be accountable later on then whatever single detail that you deal with human with human being whether it muslim or non muslim you will be become very very professional example you will be very professional in managing the quality the quality of work the quality of report the quality of product if you are in, you are running a restaurant the quality of food you don't prepare the food just for the sake of preparing it but you know that you are you are responsible and later on accountable so you will give the very best and you will put in the element of itqan high level of determination and this way you become professional when you have high level of honor and integrity then you will you will focus on high level of productivity no more wastages no more waste of time no more waste of resources no more waste of energy because you always focus on the very best because no you know that later on if you give a substandard job and quality you will be answerable my dear friends if you sacrifice productivity believe me because you have the authority and responsible in that area if you are not accountable or answerable in dunya you will be answerable later in the in the hereafter the third one in safety there is no second thought about being safe in the workplace at home at work because why you are the khalifa you are the ruler then you will definitely perform the very best and you know if you perform substandard you are going to be be held responsible and later on be accountable what else you become trustworthy because people trust you al amin people know that because of your high level of integrity and amanah people put a very high trust on you and we become like you know close to the the the, the, the attributes of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam al amin whatever people give to you it is automatic you can deliver it because why you are trustworthy then you are become reliable even though you have pro- even though you face the problems you don't put problems as an excuse for you not to perform the very best because you know you have allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are responsible to the outcome to the mankind and you focus on hablu min allah and hablu min nas and you know if there is an obstacle if you have a problem this problem comes from allah and you go back to allah and seek for his guidance and you become very very reliable and because of that allah guide you with a different direction and you become very creative my brother my dear brothers and sisters if you really internalize and understand this this burger leadership principle with the 40 authority responsibility accountability and integrity you will demonstrate a very high level of professionalism in terms of your quality productivity safety trustworthy reliability and you become very very creative all in all because why you serve the mankind to get the barakah from allah you serve the very best to the mankind 
in order to get the marbatillah the blessing the blessing and reza from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alhamdulillah so let us move on and i wish to i wish to quote a very famous hadith from bukhari and muslim muttafaqun alai in relationship to this model i want to link this model to this hadith from abu rarah radhiyallahu anhu reported that the messenger of allah peace be upon him said among the signs of hypocrite or munafiq are three even if he fasts and prays and claims to be a muslim i pray to allah that we are being safeguarded and protected from being the munafiqin highlighted by this hadith because rasulullah mentioned even though if he fasts if he prays and he claims to be a muslim he still have the attributes of being a munafiqin and we want to avoid for ourselves from being the munafiqin because when we become the munafiq you are not professional in the eyes of allah and in the eyes of the muslim and the mankind and what are those three number one is when he speaks he lies why why did he lie because he doesn't feel that he is responsible and accountable for what he speak and under the current technological wave people no longer speaks but people now put their word into 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 text and blast it into facebook blast it into the um, whatsapp blast it into the instagram will you have to be responsible and accountable for what you have blasted in the social media definitely yes you will be held responsible and accountable because you have been authorized to make the decision on yourself so number one is when someone speaks he lies and number two when he make promises what happened he breaks the promises and how many promises have we made as a leader and how many promises have we broken as a leader and we make the we break the promises without feeling any guilt this is a problem as a husband we make a lot of promises as a wife we make a lot of promises to our husband as a father and mother we make a lot of promises to our family as a manager as a leader in the organization we made a lot of promises to our people to our clients as a leader in our organization sometimes we made a lot of promises and sometimes we break those promises and remember you will be held accountable for all those broken promises and number 3 when he is trusted he betrays when he is trusted to deliver certain task and responsibility he betrayed he did not perform the highest level of quality and professionalism he is capable of doing so but he chose not to perform the very best he had the decision he he has the authority to make the good decision but he made the bad decisions he betrayed the promises he betrayed the promises and he will be held accountable my dear brothers and sisters from this hadith i would like to highlight on this one because of the time constraint later on we will discuss on speak and trust so for this discussion i will only focus on promises and sometimes we break our promises and this happen many many times Okay, this happened many, many times in our daily life. Um, be it with our family, be it with our people in the organization, what they what not. So when we talk about promises, the moment we talk about promises, it will always be associated with deadline and delivery. We promise something to our family. and of course there is a certain deadline and something that we need to deliver to fulfill our promises but life is not always beautiful and life is not always calm sometimes allah put us in a test 
and give up the obstacle that you cannot you, that, that you cannot fulfill your promises. Okay? You cannot fulfill the promises. So when we talk about the promise, there are two paths. There are two paths that I want to highlight. Number one is you break the promises with your own intention. Your, you have your own intention to break the promises. You do not want to fulfill it. And this one, you will be held accountable and you are not professional. But sometimes, this is what I want to highlight, sometimes it is not your intention. Unintentional. Unintentional. Sorry for my bad handwriting. And this is what we are going to discuss. Once you have to break your promises because of unintentional circumstances, some problems come. You know, that make you have to change your priorities. You have promised to your subordinates that you are going to offer him better, better promotion at the end of the year because of his performance. You have promised that. But suddenly, because of bad business situation, profitability is going down, and you have to change your priority to something else, and you cannot fulfill what you have promised, then what should you do? People will always look at your promise and will quickly label you as very unprofessional if you don't fulfill your promises. So in, in the event that circumstances, challenges come in between and you cannot fulfill your promises, what should you do professionally? Okay, what should you do professionally? Somebody raise a hand. Um, you want to say something? Direct you think of vision integrity. So okay, can I can I just continue? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna continue. Okay, I'm gonna continue. All right. So um, again, I would like to make, make my principle. When you promise something, you do it intentionally. You break the promises, or you do it unintentionally when you break the promises. This is a big no. This is shaitan. This is iblis. But when it is unintentionally, when Allah gives you challenges, obstacles, then what should you do? That is what we are going to discuss so that we can become a professional Muslim. Yeah? Because life is not always beautiful. So let me clear this one. And, um, okay, let us continue our discussion. So my dear brothers and sisters, in the event that you are that you need to fulfill your promises and you, you you are stopped to change your priority to something else then number one what should you do do not run away from problems you don't run away from problems you don't you should not keep quiet because of the problem that make you change your priorities these are little little steps so that you can become professional at the times of adversity. So number one, do not run away from problems. Do not keep quiet. Professional Muslim, because he feels high sense of responsibility and accountability, they will have to face the problem. And you have to be honest to open up. Be honest and open up. Say what is happening that make you have to change your priority. Because Allah will put something that will make you change your priority. Yeah, and in, 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 in life we change our priorities a lot. And what happened then when you be honest and open up? Then what are the things that you need to do for recovery? If you have promised your customer to deliver on certain dates, and because of unforeseen circumstances, you need to be honest. And when you want to be honest, you need to be honest before the deadline. Being professional, you need to do it before the deadline. Not be honest after the deadline. Before the deadline. You have promised to deliver it, let's say, tomorrow at 3 o'clock. And for some reason, bad weather or accident or anything, before the deadline, be honest and offer recovery to your customer. And finally, finally, what can you do? Finally, what you can do is you can negotiate with your another party and look for alternatives. 
look for alternatives. Yeah. So these are these are the areas that we need to do. At times of we cannot fulfill our promises, and we know that we are responsible and accountable. Do not run away. Don't keep quiet. Be honest. Look for recovery and negotiate. What happened now? A lot of professional Muslims, when problem happen, they just keep quiet and expecting that the customer or the other person to understand the situation that they are in right now. How can your customer understand if you are not open up and if you don't discuss for, for recovery? Yeah, so this is point number one. Next, we go into point number two on humility. My dear brothers, when we talk about humility, do not be arrogant. Do not be arrogant. Arrogant is the attribute of Iblis. Because Iblis' arrogance, he was kicked out from Jannah. Okay? So, we must shield ourselves from being arrogant. And I would like to quote a very important verse from Al-Furqan, uh, verse number 63. Rahim <laughs> In, uh, in chapter Furqan, Allah mentioned the attributes of the Ibadul Rahman. There are, I think, 11 or 13 attributes of Ibadul Rahman. And Allah begins the Ibadul Rahman for those yamshu alal ardi hawna, for those who walk on the street with humility, and wa idha khatabahumul jahilun, when they are in confrontation with those who are jahil. And they say, Qalu Salama. They say, words of peace. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah mentioned when we are confronting with Jahilun, even with the Jahil, we use the nice words. What more if within a good, good community of people, we are even more encouraged to use the right word. And when you use the right words, Qalu Salama, you become the servants of the most merciful. So, being a professional Muslim, always watch your words, always watch your texts, and always portray the good words. Yeah? And here, I want to share with you a very simple steps. I would call it as the winning steps. Okay? So that you can show your respect and humility to others. And with the grace of Allah, people will respect you. And we people respect you. Why? Because you are truly professional. And I'm going to give you these simple steps to be the professional Muslim by portraying your humility and humbleness. Number one, S. As an individual, regardless whether you are the boss, you are the manager, you are the director, you are the owner of a business, even you are a father, even you are a husband, we make mistakes. We make mistakes. And when we make mistakes, what should we do? First, S. Please say sorry. Apologize. When we make mistake, Tolu Salama, I'm sorry. Even though you are a leader, even though you are a manager, Tolu Salama, I'm sorry. Say to your people, say to your subordinates, say to your children, Baba is sorry. Say to your children, Mama, sorry. Tolu Salama. And then T, what is T? Always say thank you for every good deed. Even say, people say bad words to you. You don't push back the bad words to them. Say thank you to them for your remarks. Thank you. Simple word. This is not rocket science. Little thing that you do. You say thank you to your people. You say thank you to your subordinates. It will touch very deep in other people's hearts. It will strike very deep into other people's mind. And this simple word, thank you, is slowly missing from our vocabulary. We need to say this one a lot. Kalu salama. Thank you. 
when you are driving your car, regardless what car you are driving, and there is another traffic giving you the way, raise your hand and say thank you. Sometimes we become arrogant because the car, the type of car that we drive. Sometimes we become arrogant because the area of neighborhood that we live in. Sometimes we become arrogant because of the position that we have in the organization. And remember, arrogant is the attributes of Iblis. Kalu salama, in order to kill, in order to eradicate the stubbornness and arrogance in our, in our life, say a lot of thank you to other people, even though they give bad remarks to you. And then say a lot, excuse me, when you are going to intrude and you want to interject somebody. Your subordinate is busy doing something and you want to give another new job to them. Start with excuse me. And when you did, they did perform something very good, say excellent. Excellent, Mabro. Thank you very much for an excellent job. When the more you say these good words, the more you motivate your people the more you motivate your, 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 your family, your children. In the social media, people, there are a lot of cursing and bad words. We as Muslims need to portray our professionalism and it begins with the simple words. Sorry, thank you, access me and excellent. And next one is, you need to use this word a lot to show your humility and humbleness. Please, even though you are a manager, you can always say please to your clerk. Even though you are a director, you can always say please to your driver. Even though you are a father, you can always say please to your wife. My dear honey, please, I am very thirsty. Can you prepare me a cup of tea? Nice words. Nice words heals. Nice words motivates. And nice words inspires. Even though you are a husband, you can always call you salama to your wife. Not only during the first week of your marriage, even though you have married for 20, 30, 40 years, call you salama with your spouses. And finally, as smile with them, shake hands with them, touch them, and greet them all along. And my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, let us portray our professionalism as Khalifa by propagating a lot of salam in our words. وَإِذَا خَوْتَوْبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا And these are the words of peace. Salam. Say sorry. Say thank you. Say excuse me. Say excellent. Say please. And give a lot of smile. Touch to your people. Touch to your family and give them salam. And when you do this, very basic, people, inshallah, will respect you more. People will uh, show more humility because they see you with a leader of high level of professionalism. Alhamdulillah. So we are done with that. Now we move on to the last topic of today on human interaction. Okay, human interaction. And I will need maybe like 10 to 15 minutes uh, before I end uh, my session for today. And remember, we have talked about two, principles and humility. When we talk about principles, let me close this one and take a look at yourself. Okay, we have gone to two topics. The first topic, we talk about uh, principles, and we talk about principles, we talk about the burger principle as professional Muslim, and there are four T's. You have the authority, responsibility, accountability and when you practice all of this with high sense of accountability that you'll be answerable later in the future in, in, in the year after then the integrity comes in and when you have people with high level of integrity then you do your job with high level of professionalism safety quality productivity creativity you know reliability and trustworthy this is this is missing in in, in muslims community the trustworthiness. And then number two, we talk about the humility. Okay, what is our hope of Bahumul Jahiluna? Kalu Salama. Kalu Salama. And we follow the five steps. Say sorry. Say thank you. Say excuse me and excellent. Say please and say salam. 
give smiles. And people will look at you with high level of humility and respect, and they will respect you with high level of professionalism. And let us take a look at the last topic that we are going to talk to discuss today. Um, the last topic that we discuss today is human interaction. And when we talk about the human interaction, we're talking about communication. Okay. When we talk about communication, we talk about clear message. Communication is all about clear message. And clear message will lead to clear actions. When you have clear message, it will lead to clear actions. But, uh, but what will happen? What will happen if you have message that is unclear? Unclear message will lead to what? Unclear message, my dear brothers and sisters, will lead to a nuclear war. <laughs> Crisis. It's very simple. From UN, and then you tweak it, become NU. From a simple message that is wrongly transmitted, wrongly understood, then it lead to nuclear war. It will lead to confrontation. It will lead to crisis. And how many crises even in the family because, because of unclear message? Because of unclear information. Not to mention what happened in an organization. Sometimes people become, crises become uncontrollable because of unclear message. So in the following discussion, we are going to talk about very important that the message needs to be made clear. Do not send unclear message because that will lead to a nuclear war. Okay, I hope that is very, very clear. Let us move on. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're talking about, I'm sorry, it's not about smooth, we're talking about smooth communication. This is a wrong, my typo, I'm sorry about that. I'm talking about smooth communication. When communication is very smooth, then we have what we call the smooth in terms of daily operation, no hiccup, no crisis, and no confrontation. And I want to make it very easy when talk about communication, to make it smooth, I will call it as the A, B, C, D, E, F in communication. Simple. In order to make the message become clear, we need to follow this very simple rule, A, B, C, D, E, F. And what is A? A is all about assignment. At home, you give some task and assignment to your wife. And wife, mother, you give some task and assignment to your children. At work, you give assignment and task to your people. So whenever you give the assignment, very importantly, it must be accompanied by B. What is B that need to follow together with the assignment? Is what we call the big picture. The purpose, the reason, the why, something needs to be done. Why we need to why we need to call you salama? The big picture is you will be accountable in the hereafter. Why you need to follow taqwa? The big picture is jannah. We don't want to go into nar. We want to go to jannah. So that is the big picture. So my dear friends, I want to share with you what does it mean by a big picture? What does it mean by a big picture? I want to share with you another slide. Okay, I want to share with you another slide. Okay, and I want you to guess. This is a small picture, and this small picture comes something from a from a bigger picture. What is the true picture of this picture? This red color. Some of you may think that is like a curtain. This may be like your you know the, like the scarf for your hijab, or maybe like clothing. You know things like that. But the big picture is this one. This is part of a Nemo. So when you don't see the big picture, people start to guess and make wrong conclusion. Next one. What is this? What is the big picture for this one? The big picture of this one is, is a rooster. And people will make wrong assumptions when they do not see the big picture. And finally, what is this? What is this? What is the big picture for this one? Then pe when people are not clear, when they only see the small picture, then they will start to make wrong assumptions. 
they will say that this is like a curtain or maybe like a roof and things like that. But the matter of the fact that this is the money, this is the Malaysian ringgit currency. So what I'm trying to say is this. When people see only small picture, then they will see weakness. And weakness lead to assumption. And when people assume, they make wrong judgment. We need to kill the wrong assumption. And how to kill the wrong assumption? By sharing the big picture. Share the big picture. Why are you doing this? Why this task is, it is being, this, you need to do this certain task, yeah? So let me go back to my uh, original slides. So we talk about the B, the big picture. We need to share the big picture. Why certain task need to be done? And then see what you see. Caretaker, who should do? You must be very, very specific. Who should carry it out? Let's say in, an, in, 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 your, in your company, under you, you have three people. And you are assigning a report to these three people. Who should deliver? Mention their names. Don't just mention somebody needs to prepare this report. In the end, nobody will prepare the report. Then, unclear message lead to a nuclear war. Then crisis will happen. You must specify clearly who should do what. Then you become very, very professional. And then D, what is D? My dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters, it is very important in when we are communicating the task and we are communicating the promises, we need to communicate the deadlines. We need to communicate the deadlines. And sometimes leaders, they use as soon as possible as deadline. That is not deadline. They use the word urgent as deadline. That is not deadline. Deadline has the time. You must mention specifically, I want this one urgently, two hours from now. Then it becomes very clear when it should be delivered. You cannot just say something superficial. I want it tomorrow. When tomorrow? Tomorrow there are 24 hours. I want it immediately. When immediately? You need to specify the time. Okay? Allah has made Yawmul Qiyamah with no deadline. So that the, the, the hikmah behind it is so that we continue to struggle to give the very best. But as a professional khalifa, when you are dealing, you need to be professional and mention the deadline. Okay, next is the E. You know, when you as a leader, certain things need to be carried out according to your expectations. And your expectation as a leader may be different expectation from another leader. For example, for myself, if I am giving a responsibility to my clerk to prepare a report, my expectation is I want to have a like three inch margin on the right side of the report. Three inch margin on the right side of the report. And what should I do as a professional khalifa? I need to tell my clerk, clearly, I need that margin. You don't expect your clerk to know your expectation without being told. You need to tell them. So my dear brothers and sisters, as a professional khalifa, you need to help your people. You need to help your family to fulfill your expectation. And you need to share your expectation. You need to share how the meal should be prepared. You need to share your expectation, how the task should be delivered. You don't make your people and family or your wife second guess what you want. Things are moving very fast and need to, you need to move it very, very fast and you need to deliver it very, very quickly and effectively. And F, what is F? My dear friends, when task is being delivered, when you, when you promise something to your customer, you need to give feedback and update to them. You need to give feedback and update to your customers. You need to give feedback and update to your boss about the progress. Because the, the closer we get to the deadline, the more anxious we become as a leader. And this is normal. The closer you get to the deadline, you become anxious and you become more and more nervous. So how do you smoothen that feeling? Update the progress. So if you want to be a professional businessman, once you have, delivered, once you have promised to your customer, update them before the deadlines. Then you are professionals. You don't give excuses the moment you cross the deadline. Then you are not professional. 
whatever you want to do, update before the deadlines. At work, the progress of your report, update your boss before the deadlines. Then you demonstrate you are a true professional. And up until J, we have G. What is G? My dear friends, sometimes you can, you can convey the instructions through words. But sometimes words are simply not enough. You need to put it into graphic and sketches. Even Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the seerah, when uh, when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he wanted to mention to the Sahaba about the the, the road of taqwa, um, and he illustrated it by putting a sketch on the sand. He took up a stick and he drew on the sand like an arrow and he said that there are a lot of paths that will bring you to Jahannam and this is the straight path in Surat al mustaqim that will bring you to Jannah and Prophet Muhammad drew that on the sand because sometimes what cannot describe what we intend to, to explain we need to describe it through graphics and by what and this is professionalism Next one, H. Mr. Brother Atu Adal uh, Nazir, I need another five more minutes. Is it okay? This is my last slide. I need five more minutes. Okay, H. You know, sometimes you need yeah. to share. Okay, I, I'll continue five more minutes, inshallah. Sometimes you need to share your past experience to the younger generations about what are the obstacles, the hardship that you have faced share that with them with humility so that they know and understand and they can make the you know they can make that as a guidance for example for a new for a wife who is get who is pregnant and who has no experience of delivering a baby definitely she has no experience then the mother and the mother-in-law should share what are the experience that they have gone through before so that they more or less get the experience and the father and the father-in-law need to talk to the husband what do you need to prepare and what do you need to do because this is your first time experience and you need to give hints at all the historical experience you cannot expect them to understand everything through google sometimes as a leader you need to share next one the i what is i there are a lot of sit a situation when the leader gave the work instruction and after they have finished given the instruction, they will ask this question to the subordinates. And the question sounds like this. Do you understand? And what will be the response? People will say yes. Can you do it? And people say yes. Is it okay? And people will say yes, it is okay. They will simply say yes, okay, and they can do it. But in reality, what happened? They make a mistake. Where do we go wrong? We go wrong in order to get the real understanding of the message. I would like to draw to your attention when pilots communicate with the control tower, when the control tower give the instruction and they say like uh, MH123, change your course 15 degrees north. And the captain will not say okay. The captain will not say roger the captain will repeat and rephrase the message so that the control tower will gauge the understanding is correct or not in order to avoid the disaster. So the key point here is the pilot, they repeat the message. Similarly, my dear brothers and sisters, for a professional leader, when you have given a work instruction, ask your people to repeat so that you can assess their level of understanding. We do not want people to make mistakes and the energy that we use to correct the mistake can be very enormous and they will lead to big, bigger, bigger, bigger problems. And finally, J. What is J? When you give a work instruction, make sure your people write it down. At work, for example, or even your customer gives something to you, write it down. This is professional. So that when you write it down, you don't miss important things and it is easier for you to rephrase and repeat it again. Yeah. So when you are giving the work instruction over the phone, make sure that your people on the other end of the line, they are ready to write down your message. Because we do not want people make a mistake because of the misunderstanding. 
and the cost of rework, the cost of correction is so huge. So in order to be professional, these are the simple secrets. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and J. Let me repeat. Be professional in giving the assignment by sharing the big picture. Make sure the caretaker is clear. Make sure the deadline is very specific for the time. Make sure you share your expectations clearly. Don't make people second guess. What is your expectation? Always give feedback and update the progress of what you are doing to, the, to your customer, to your boss. Sometimes words are not enough. You need to put into graphics and drawings. Share the historical experience and hints. Make people interpret it correctly by repeating your instruction. And finally, J, jot it down. And my dear friends, brothers and sisters, I would like to end this chapter of Professional Khalifa, part number two, by this very important verse from Al-Ma'idah, uh, verse number eight. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu kunu qawwameena lillahi shuhada'a bilqis ولا يجرمنكم شنآن قوم على ألا تعدلوا اعدلوا اعدلوا وأقرب للتقوى واتقوا الله اعدلوا وأقرب للتقوى واتقوا الله اعدلوه واقرب للتقوى واتقوا الله ان الله خبير بما تعملون صدق الله العظيم even though this verse specifically to the judge for those who are making the decision but we can learn and tadabbur from this ayah as a leader we can take the lesson of the as a leader. And Allah make sure that all who you believe be per persistently standing firm for Allah, witnesses in justice, be other. And do not let the hatred of a people prevent you from being just. Be just that is nearer to righteousness. Be just because it is closer to taqwa. And fear Allah, indeed Allah is acquainted with what to do. And I would like to highlight this word. Do not let your hatred of other people prevent you from being just. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-'ali al-'azim. My dear brothers and sisters, sometimes because of our hatred to other people, make us become unjust, make us become unprofessional, make us have like a double standard. Even though they are non-Muslims, but they are still human beings, and we are responsible and later be accountable for being unjust to them. So, Adilu, be just to our taqwa, because being just is close to taqwa. So, with that, I would like to sincerely urge to my dear brothers and sisters, regardless for whatever challenges and obstacles that you face in front of you. Remember, you have, only, have Allah in front of you that will always assist you. Behold to your responsibility and accountability and you know that later on you are going to be to be responsible and be accountable, inshallah. And um, finally, let us conclude. When we talk about principle, we talk about the 40s. When we talk about the humility, we talk about the steps. And we talk about the human interaction, we talk about the A, B, C, D, E, all the way until J. So my dear brothers and sisters, with that, I conclude my session. I thank you very much so that um, you gain the benefit from this session, the little thing that you can make a change on yourself and you can turn into a better professional. And again, these are not all rocket science. These are all fundamental. These are it's easy for us to implement, easy for us to apply. So with that, I end the session and I pass it over to the, uh, to the organizer. Jazakumullah khairul jazak. Thank you very much, so that Allah uh, forgive us for all the mistakes that we did, and uh, also um, give barakah and rahmah uh, in this session. Thank you so very much. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair, brother Abu Hajar.
uh, for delivering an inspirational, a motivational, and uh, thought-provoking talk. Uh, your words were self-explanatory for the audience. Hope uh, everyone would have taken this uh, uh, workshop in the right sense to build their uh, capacity. Uh, I pray Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to bestow you with uh, more iman, uh, knowledge, uh, wisdom, and uh, as well as practice uh, Islam. Shalom. Jazakallah. Once again, brother.